Hey everybody, Monica King here, King's Titan Homestead, and welcome to our channel. Um, I really didn't have content for today. I basically, well, actually I do. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, last night, uh, Jennifer and I went to Bear Agricultural uh, Center in uh, Marana, and we did a a live bee removal for them. They uh, had called yesterday morning and wanted to save the bees. So <laughs> uh, we went and it was an open air hive and they had the, uh, they had a gorgeous queen in it. Um, sorry, I didn't get photos uh, but uh, of the queen, but we do have a little photo, a few photos of the actual removal. Um, how much comb that they had built. Pretty young hive. Um, they definitely would not have made it through winter. So uh, Bear really did save the bees by getting them into the hands of a beekeeper. These girls thought they were good inside of this tree, but it uh, looks like they've been getting a little warm because there's some comb on the bottom. A couple spots where they overheated and comb dropped. So Jennifer is literally my crazy, crazy soul sister. She's like, like everything Jennifer is pretty much like everything Monica. Um, bees, animals, homesteading, self-sufficiency, sustainability, gardening, like everything she she we are like this and um did i say gardening like plants <laughs> so this crazy chick she's like the she's a wild woman so she texts me yes yesterday or the day day before she texts me the day before and she says hey i'm going to go to borderlands nursery uh, their plant sale and this is you know for her this is a drive for her and it would be a drive for me. And I was like going, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. I can't believe you're going there. And so it's in Patagonia, Arizona. And so I was like, wow, you know, that's so cool. She's like, oh, do you want me to get you anything? And I'm like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> but did they have a plant list? Sure, sure enough, you know, of course they have a plant list and, and everything that they have available on their website. And so I got on there and I found four plants that I just really, really was like, I'm trying to be... I'm trying not to buy a whole lot of plants because I kill a lot of plants. And so I was like, I'm, I got to sit down here. Sorry. So I was like, I need to, uh, you know, be careful because I'm kind of redoing. I have to redo some of my soil amendments and things like that. So I'm like, you know, I have to be careful. I'm not going to buy a lot. So I looked at their plant list and I'm like, oh, kidney wood is an awesome plant that when in my area, it's a native, but it's not down, it's not in my elevation. So I was like, it's up in the mountains, maybe six miles from here, but not here. And I'm like, oh, I really should put some kidney wood in. And I'm like, okay, okay, just one, you know, and a small one, the one gallon pot. And so I'm like, kidney wood, um, dewberry, because it's an edible for humans, and it's a native species too. And um, what else was on my list? Um, oh yeah, Apache plume. I, uh, it's a great pollinator plant, and it's blooming right now in higher elevations. I've tried putting it in before. It was doing really, really great in my pollinator path project that I had until the puppies, we got these puppies, and that was like two years ago, but these puppies, um, I had this pollinator path while I was making all kinds of unique um, archeological, you know, like a walk that takes you through time um, about beekeeping. And so I had all these pollinator plants going into that area and the puppies just destroyed it. Every time, whenever I'd water, they would go behind me and dig the plant up and then lay in it. Um, so we have to, all the gardens have to be within fencing so that the dogs can't get to it. And we have to have dogs. We, there's just 
too many people problems um, to not have dogs. So um, the dogs have their job. Their job is to um, protect the property. And so we have to have them. So this pollinator path area that I had gone put in was working with our older dogs, but not with puppies. Literally, we had one of them walk right up, honey, walks right up to a thistle, a New Mexico thistle that the bees and, and butterflies absolutely adore. And it was, it was budding, <laughs> just about to flower. And she walks up to it and she looks over at me while I'm looking at her and I'm like, we have eye contact. And that dog bites off the tip, the bud, just, you know, this thistle, it's got pickers. And she bites off and just spits it out. Just bites off the head of the bud and spits it out. This was, I still, I'm like, get away from my plant. I couldn't believe she did that. And so that point, from that point on, realizing that there's just no way that I can have have a, path, a pollinator pathway in that area. You know, everybody's like, oh, plant, you know, desert plants. Well, I was, but you have to water them in the beginning and get them to get them established. And there was just, I mean, those puppies were just not gonna, they're not tolerating it. They're like, nope, not in our area. You're not gonna have a pollinator pathway. So I'm having to move my pollinator path into the garden area and that's like one of the projects that i'm working on but i'm not ready to put in all of these plants so i kind of got sidetracked there apache plume is blooming it's a great plant we don't have it here jennifer took some pictures of it and i'm going to steal some of her pictures And I'm going to just show this ginormous Apache plume that she took photos of up on Mount Lemon. And my mom and dad, when they were here a couple of years ago, they were up in the higher country. And I can't remember where they were, but they took photos or, or it was at a rest area somewhere on the way here. Um, and they took photos of it because they were like, look at the bees on this plant, Monica. And I'm like, that's a patchy plume and <laughs> yes I need that so the puppies had destroyed the one that I had and but I was waiting in order to put in my pollinator because I'm not exactly sure where the pollinator pathway is going to go yet so I was just on hold with that but um so th but I'm like okay if there's a gallon maybe I'll put it in a bigger pot and just keep it going and and raise it up um, until it's older. So Apache Plume was on my list, as well as uh, a desert sumac, a sumac of some sort. Now, I believe there's three different types, depending on elevation or whatever. And so I was like, you know, just uh, pick me up a sumac, not all three, but because they had, I think two or three on the list, I can't remember. Um, but I'm like, you know, just one of them. And she, so she, then she's there and she's like, which one? And I'm like, I don't know. Can, is there somebody you could talk to and just say, which one is best for pollinators? So like, I really want one that's really good, like uh, a good nectar source. So I'm like, just pick me up one. I don't care which one. I'm not going to be mad. Just one. So yeah. Sorry about that. I had to move my water. I'm watering the garden as we're sitting here. And so, okay. So last night, at the bee removal, Jennifer and I meet up. I take her like a pot full of all these um, papayas that I sprouted. <laughs> and I mean, they were looking all bleh, wilty from uh, me doing a bunch of, um, oh, I did the uh, hive inspections for Sarah. So, and that was a video that I posted yesterday um, for Sarah. If anybody learns anything from that, that's great. But um, that mostly was just for Sarah. And um, it's just easier for me to put these uh, longer videos instead of trying to edit them all out and miss a bunch of information. And as it was, I didn't tell her everything I wanted to tell her um, from when we were doing the, when I was doing the inspection, she couldn't be there with me. So that's part of that. And I also like taking video while I'm there, even with the hobbyist, because they can then go back and review. So. Um, that's just something, a service that I offer 
little hive maintenance, uh, hive checks kind of thing. So, um, so that was kind of yesterday and those plants were in my truck for a long period of time. And so, uh, I hand her this pot, one pot with these little wilty, <laughs> sad looking papayas. And I kind of feel bad because this is what happened next. So here's my Apache plume and it's a beautiful little one gal. I mean, they have a, a this is a nice, healthy plant. And I'm, I'm like just so excited. So here's my Apache plume. Very, very awesome. Here is my dewberry, which, um, so it kind of gets a fruit on it that is very similar to a raspberry. Um, so yeah, you put it in part shade. So it's sim very similar. It's got the pickers and everything. So got the dewberry. Now I'm sitting here looking through these plants because I'm like going, there's a bunch I didn't ask for. She's just a crazy woman. She's like, you put Jennifer, she said, you put me in charge of plants, you're gonna get more than one. <laughs> I'm like, no kidding. I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of go through the line because, okay, I do see Schumach. So here's the Schumach. So this one is the evergreen Schumach. Um, very low water use, which is excellent. So I can put that in a lower, in another area. And so we're, we're working on, and this is uh, also another evergreen Schumach too. She said, Monica, you needed two. You didn't need just one. <laughs> what a crazy woman. Okay, so two Schumachs, because yes, the pollinators love these. Okay, so yeah, that's what that was. Um, and then this one here, here is the, uh, three leaf Schumach. So a different, uh, different Schumach. So, and medium water use. So this is really great. I love the way that Borderlands tags their, you know, like makes little notes on their, their tags. Um, so I got both the Schumachs and extra of one of them. This is, this is just the funnest. This was like better than Christmas. Was it my birthday and I didn't know it? I'm like, Jennifer, you are an awesome, crazy lady. I love you. Oh, this is fantastic. Wild bergamot. So yes, wild bergamot. Um, medium water. So yeah. Oh, and it's even got some seeds on it. Awesome. What else do we have here? This looks like a dahlia. Look kind of, oh, it's dahlia puchara, pulchra, pulchra, low to medium water, Santa Catalina prairie flower, but it, it definitely is a dahlia, a dahlia, dahlia, I think. I have one or two or three different types of dahlia, and I did not, I don't, I don't think I had this one, which is really cool. This one's looking a little sad, but it is doing really good. This is a Greg's Blue Mist and butterflies. I mean, this is a major pollinator plant. So um, I do have one in a pot back there, but always welcome more pollinator plants. And this one here is Mount Lemon Marigold. And I think I have one of these already, but again, another great, pollinator plant and um, this one I did not have it's the Santa Cruz no Santa Catalina sage so Santa Catalina sage I got this now <laughs> when I got so much work to do I gotta go plant um, this one is a cardinal flower the hummingbirds love this isn't that beautiful so I gotta get to work here um, but wow Jennifer you are so freaking awesome. Okay, so thank you very, very much for that. And um, 
all kinds of really cool stuff happening. Uh, let's, we'll, um, I'll check back with you guys at another time here. I have a gentleman coming in to work on the RV's um, electrical system. So, got to get on it. Thanks for joining me. So, until I can get these planted or pick a place for them, um, I'm just putting them in a pool and putting some water in the bottom uh, so that uh, um, they can soak up some water while I'm uh, doing some other projects this morning.